So I'm Tanya Clark, I'm the founder of Invergrow, a Malawian company uh, promoting the research and commercialization of industrial hemp in Malawi, Africa. Uh, we're here at Chitedze Agricultural Research Station in Nilongwe, the capital, which is where we are doing our research on industrial hemp. And we have this research plot and our uh, commercial research farm that we are working on. And we've been conducting trials with the government of Malawi since October 2015, but first started our lobbying and adventure in 2013. So yeah, it's uh, really a dream come true now to be towards the tail end of our research here in Malawi. To date, it's been funded by a private group of investors. You know, they're so passionate about this and that's been really lovely because there have been so many challenges. It's uh, been really nice just to be able to talk to them really openly and honestly about what's happening and what the vision is and they really believe in it. Uh, the, first, my, the first obstacle I encountered was when we uh, met with one of the sort of top researchers and uh, we were following the appropriate channels but we decided to go straight to this particular researcher at this institution um, and he kind of asked us to leave and you know kind of with all the products wouldn't even touch them and really honestly thought that it was marijuana and just didn't want to be associated with it didn't want to even touch the the products uh, the fiber stalks the you know they were harmless things um, and it gave us an insight into the obstacles we had to overcome, the conservatism, very religious culture here, and we had to be very sensitive about that and uh, take it slowly, spend a lot of time trying to explain to people why this was different from marijuana. Uh, obviously, people who love the plant love all of it, and that's fine, but we're not in, uh, we're in a different environment here, and we've had to be cautious and respectful about the, the culture and how we educate people about what this plant is. So we chose to choose industrial hemp, the non-narcotic, low THC variety of the crop um, to promote. And that's what we've been doing since 2013. Um, so our milestones, I think, was when the government finally gave us the license after commercial, uh, the research license after two years of lobbying uh, in October 2015. Uh, that was a momentous occasion and then uh, the work started, we had to do all the field work, we had to put in the boreholes, the water tanks, um, procure viable seed. Um, we're subtropical so we were always going to struggle to find uh, viable seed for fibre, but uh, we're finding that at least for grain and for seed, which can be processed into food and oils, um, it, it, we do have a starter. Uh, obviously we're into the flowers as well and the cannabinoid side of things. Um, even though it's a bit of a bubble at the moment, we do believe in the medicinal and healing properties of the plant. But again, it's all the low THC aspects. Well, a couple of the people said, oh, can't you find another name for it? I'm like, no, <laughs> it's, a, it's industrial hemp. It's a variety of cannabis. We're not gonna escape from it. So let's just be honest, transparent and open and honest, you know. Um, didn't want to dig our heads in the sand. So basically we would say, you know, Hello, Honourable or Hello, Honourable Minister. Um, hello, Doctor. Hello, Sir. Uh, we're here today to talk to you about a, um, a new cash crop that we're promoting. Uh, it's industrial hemp. And uh, we've bought today a display, plethora, my little magic box of tricks, um, of products made from industrial hemp from companies around the world. And uh, we would like just a moment of your time to explain to you what this is and, and the difference between uh, its cousin plant, uh, Chamba, marijuana. And uh, we wanted to explain this to you because we would like to have your support and it depends what level they're at and, uh, and therefore we would like to present this to you. And then, you know, we would always start with the, the products themselves we had samples of hemp seed oil um, protein powder shelled seeds cosmetics body shop have a fantastic range of cosmetics which has been really useful uh, so yeah I've got this whole box of materials made from hemp and they touch they feel they smell they taste uh, they put on the skin and that that was magic when it came to convincing people about that this isn't for smoking uh, and that was their main fear 
Uh, another fear they had was also that they didn't have the resources as a country or as a police force to monitor the cultivation of industrial hemp and that people would want to grow marijuana in the hemp fields. Um, but we try to explain to them that the way you cultivate this crop is different from marijuana because you're looking for different things. Um, you're planting at greater densities, uh, you're, uh, they cross-pollinate, so this industrial hemp is low THC and you don't want marijuana to be cross-pollinated with crap. <laughs> it makes it weaker. So if you're going to be a chamba farmer, then the last thing you want is for your crop to be pollinated with this stuff. When you're growing marijuana, you want the females only. Um, that's, uh, they create the flowers, that create the bud and that you smoke. Uh, whereas here we have the males as well as the females. And so the male pollen will obviously um, pollinate the marijuana females, which you don't want. You don't want seeds. So again, it's just the agronomy and some very basic agricultural um, aspects that wouldn't really make that possible. And any Malawian chamba farmer there would agree with me and they would know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so we kind of tried to explain to the guys who understand those more technical aspects. We've tried to explain that to them. And then the, the people who want a little bit more of a layman's term, terminology and explanations, we've, we've come up with an explanation for them too. We are at Chitetse Agricultural Research Station. So this is the main um, research station for the country. It's a government research station. So all technology, seed or fertilizers or anything uh, that's agricultural has to come through um, a government research institution for um, analysis and for trials. And then eventually it's released uh, and approved by a committee. And so that's what we've been doing. We've been blessed with four hectares here. We had to fence it off for the crop's own protection. <laughs> uh, we installed some water and boreholes so that we could do some irrigation um, projects as well. Uh, and we've just been planting and learning. We've been planting 10 different varieties and we're getting more and more all the time. Uh, we've just been allowed to uh, take one of our successful varieties out to the field. So we have now 10 hectares in the field. Um, they're about my shin height, so they're still babies, but they're doing really, really well. Um, and I think we have a much better understanding now about when to plant what. Um, the plant is highly adaptive and very, very strong and hardy. Um, we've had stands that have been um, in droughts and they've revived after the rains came or when the days began to lengthen because of the summertime. It's just, just some extraordinary behavior, so it's great. I think that we, you know, the yields um, for fiber may be affected in some of the varieties because of the day length issue and it doesn't grow as tall, but it's fine for seed and flowers and other things. So yeah, I think um, it's important with this plant to be flexible. It's an incredibly, uh, it's an incredible crop. It's an incredible plant. Um, it's just literally just wanting to give, uh, just wanting to give. So we've just completely fallen in love with it and I think it's going to be a fantastic opportunity for Malawi and for the region, for the world. But um, I really want Malawi to benefit from being the first mover. Um, whilst I'm British, I've been here for 10 years and I love it here. And I love the people, I love the country, the landscape. It's, it's blessed in so many ways, but it needs innovation, it needs some creativity, it needs to take a few risks. Uh, so that's why I believe we're here to work with some incredible local people on the ground and hopefully get this thing out there. Okay, so we're looking here at uh, this stand, actually was one of the stands that was deprived of water and then bounced back when the summer came in uh, sort of October, November, the days begin to lengthen. That's when our rainy season starts in, in December, but October, the days are beginning to lengthen. Cannabis is photosensitive. So when the days begin to lengthen, it feels it. It says, oh, OK, I'm in a safe place now. I can I can grow. Um, and it kind of almost started growing back again. We've got a this is a dioecious variety. So the male, uh, the male and the female are on separate plants but we're noticing some hermaphrodite behavior. So they've changed sex, they've changed characteristics through being under stress. 
Um, here, I don't see any males, so I'm, I'm, I think that this is going to become a female plant. Very, very branchy, which is what we want for seed, actually. For fibre, you don't want this. You want it to be very closely planted so that the crop grows up and thin. So this would actually be, um, this would actually be maybe a little bit thicker, would be ideal for, for fibre for textiles, um, because you want that fibre to be strong yet tender. Um, but we are going, we are growing this crop for flowers. Um, there has been some pollination, so we do expect to get some seed, uh, but we have taken out most of the males now, so we hope to get some flowers. The community are up for it, actually. Um, they're desperate for solutions. Um, they still call it chamber. <laughs> uh, not completely aware if they know the difference, but they will, they're not really looking at it for smoking. They're looking at it from uh, all the products that we've been promoting. So, you know, looking at it for oil, for food and stuff. So they're quite excited by that. Malawians and Africans love their skin and they have the most beautiful skin. Uh, so they love their oils and stuff. Uh, Africans also have, they place a lot of importance and energy on their, on their hair to try and nourish their hair. Um, the way that maybe Caucasian people, we focus on the skin. Um, and so they, they love oils for, for the hair. And so that's been one really interesting angle that uh, we've been approached a lot on here in Malawi. Um, so yeah, I think we've got some really good feedback and once we show people the products and we're actually expelling the oil in front of their eyes and they can see the oil coming out, then they kind of just, just something clicks. Uh, it's really, really cool to see. So um, yeah, and the, we've got our intern here, he's experimenting with some hemp tea, uh, using the leaves. Uh, we're going to be experimenting making, uh, we've all been doing some hemp paper. Uh, we've got some bioplastics coming online very soon. So yeah, I think it's an exciting time ahead. Yeah, Chitetze cool. is a 500 hectare um, research station or so. So a lot of the people around here will be working at the station or yeah, mainly, mainly working at the station. Uh, but there will be villages nearby that have their chiefs. Um, so every year we have an agricultural field day where we invite the local people. Chitetze invites the local people, chiefs, other doctors, other workers, anybody who wants to come is welcome to come and see the technologies and the fields that are being planted. So ours obviously last year got a lot of attention um, and we had some hemp bread with some shelled seeds that we baked. People were trying it and dipping it in the oil. Uh, so yeah, I think most of the people around here know about this project now. Um, we've had a couple of break-ins and thefts but they've never come back. <laughs> so we assume that maybe the word's got out there that, you know, this is not very good stuff. If a guy or someone has a chamber planted in the middle of the field, definitely our, our industrial hemp can, can cross-pollinate, which is why collection and preservation of the land races is also important. A lot of people have spoken about Malawi gold, but in reality, it's very hard to find Malawi gold now. It's been bastardized by, you know, lots of other things um, but yeah we are conscious and conscientious of, of preserving the land races as well um, but we have to allow the government to take the lead on that because who are we to say what you know should be done we've advised we've cautioned uh, we would very much like to be at the forefront of a collection <laughs> of the land races um, but they are obviously high THC so we would need to get special approval for that a land race is a variety that is native to that region and it's important to preserve the um, indigenous seed or trees or plants as well as bringing in foreign ones. In fact, it's more important. Um, you can actually make a lot of the same products that you can from industrial hemp, from marijuana as well, from an industrial perspective. But unfortunately, the Malarians, I don't think, are quite ready for that yet. But we're hoping that if, once this is approved and rolled out, it won't take too long for them to recognize it. And this will be a licensed crop. This won't be allowed to be rolled out to just anybody. Uh, it will be licensed as it is in the rest of the world. A farmer or an estate farmer will have to register their farm themselves. A background check will be done. Um, and then they'll get a license for a year. And that's the way they do it in the rest of the world. So I think that's, that's the way that they're planning to do it here. And that means that the government has an element of control over it. They can collect their taxes. Um, and at least 
it will be a start towards you know the the rolling out of a national program malawi gold is the local variety of marijuana it's the nickname given to it because it was very very high in thc and gave a very uh, natural high um, it was the as i said it's not really easy to find uh, Malawi gold anymore I don't think I'm sure there are uh, growers out there and maybe if we're authorized it would be great to do an undercover <laughs> operation to try and uh, get some seed to preserve in the gene bank um, but yeah Malawi gold is the is the local uh, marijuana that's quite well known around the world <laughs> the marijuana makes you high it's got 10% above THC um, and what we have here is 0.5% THC. Um, some of the other varieties are even less than that. One of the challenges we may have in Malawi in subtropical Africa is uh, the climate. It's beautiful, it's amazing, but the, there is a direct correlation with heat and uh, the increase in THC. So we're lobbying government for 1% THC, which will allow us to play around with lots of different varieties, um, breeding, and not be criminalized for it. So I think that, uh, I think hopefully we'll achieve that. So there is a difference between industrial hemp and marijuana. Industrial hemp is the low THC, non-narcotic variety of cannabis. When I, I didn't actually study agricultural forestry, I, I have another company here in Malawi, which has been my baby since 2009, uh, we have a we make essential oils from a Carimbia citrodora, so it's like a, it produces a lemon uh, eucalyptus oil, um, and the byproduct is wood, which makes excellent charcoal. And in Malawi, we have a major problem with energy, and um, about 95% of the population rely on firewood and charcoal for their energy needs, cooking, warmth, light. Um, so I've been kind of catapulted into this realm of nature, <laughs> agriculture, forestry, and just being kind of aware of, of, of nature and how we can positively use it for uh, both uh, parties' benefit. Um, how can we manipulate it so um, you know that we can produce products while still keeping the plant or the tree alive, um, you know, feeding it, nurturing it, tending it, protecting it. Um, and then, yeah, industrial hemp kind of just popped up really like I've been eating hemp foods for a while I love moringa I love the whole health food whammy bammy uh, so hemp is all within that and uh, and yeah obviously I've had my my good times as well so <laughs> the plant is when I started I didn't know how amazing the plant is and as we proceeded I just I'm just uh, in awe it's always showing us something new um, and I just think that the more more people should be caring about innovative ways to farm and produce our products, be sustainable. Um, it's kind of a broken record now, maybe for some people, but really we have to wake the hell up. Um, and here we're having 24 hour blackouts. Imagine you at your homes, no power for 24 hours. That's like our reality right now here. Um, 24 hours off five to eight hours on and then another 24 hours off so how we use energy and how we respect our planet um, it's really poignant here it's like it's you know you live it it's really raw uh, so yeah I'm really grateful to be working with nature Malawi is investing in industrial hemp the plant does not contain the same psychoactive agents as its cannabis relative and the government says industrial hemp can help boost the economy. Take a look. Trials on different varieties of industrial hemp are being conducted at the Chetsi Research Station in Lilongwe after permission was granted to the Agricultural Department and a local company to carry out further research in 2015. Industrial hemp typically contains less than 1% of tetrahydrocannabinol THC, the psychoactive component of the cannabis plant. The plant is used in a variety of products from food to construction materials. 
In Virgro, the company behind the project says developing hemp provides an opportunity for the country to diversify from tobacco and bring in more foreign exchange. Without uh, a proper diversification strategy, Malawi will be very, very constrained because from the balance of payments point of view, the gap between our imports and our exports is widening. Imports are far much outstripping exports, so we need a diversification where we can bring in other export products or cash crops that can earn uh, or other ventures that can earn foreign exchange and we believe that industrial hemp product lines have that potential for export market. Quarter, Malawi's currency came under pressure last year partly from falling export revenues from the country's main crop, tobacco, as global commodity prices fell. The country plans to start commercial cultivation of industrial hemp by the end of this year, but state experiments will continue to identify low drug varieties of the crop. Hemp is grown for its fiber, oil and its use for textiles, construction and paper industries. Hemp seeds are also used to make cosmetics and food additives. The value addition in industrial hemp products would offer opportunities for the youth to uh, get jobs and the, we also believe that uh, through increased opportunities then uh, everybody can contribute their part in terms of national development. Although experts argue that industrial hemp does not induce intoxication in humans like marijuana, some anti-drug campaigners have reservations about the initiative. Drug Fight Malawi, a non-governmental organization, is weary of the plan to commercialize industrial hemp. Their argument is that promoting industrial hemp in the country will create ambiguity on legislation against marijuana and it may jeopardize gains made in combating drug use in Malawi. As soon as uh, members, uh, the member of parliament who introduced this came out in parliament, right away from that time, up to now, young people are smoking, are using marijuana openly without any fear. That's just because of how the government is actually acting to, to, uh, to it. So that's the, the danger which uh, we, we are fearing. Industrial hemp is grown in about 40 countries around the world, China, Canada, Australia and Europe being the main producers. Invigro plans to be a vital part of Malawi's plan to position itself as a significant producer of the crop. Well, Nebat Nirenda, one of the pioneers uh, of industrial hemp trials in Malawi. We are right here at the trial site, which is a confined trial for the crop. We started this exercise in 2013, so we are almost four years down the line doing the trials, and my job is to coordinate and interface uh, the various players in the administrative and regulatory system in the country. Well, I think the whole fun is to, to, to do something different. We are naturally an agricultural country and we rely on very limited agricultural crops, tobacco being the main uh, crop. Now we have seen what is happening in the tobacco industry, hence the need to diversify and look at other innovative cash crops. And we think hemp would be just that type of crop that we are looking for this time. Tobacco, there's only one use, which is smoking. While as a hemp, we can see a multitude of agricultural and industrial opportunities and products coming out of it. My vision too, I'm dreaming in colors and in industrial hemp colors to see that in 30 years time, hemp will have taken course and it will be grown everywhere. That is my dream. The conversations are quite interesting. At first, that is when we had this kind of trivializing language. They would call you a chamber man or a marijuana man. But I think with time they have noticed that uh, what we are into is something serious and it has taken us a lot of explaining and showing them the products that are made out of it and the opportunities around it and I'm sure a lot of them now are willing to, to see the end of our trials and actually 
us going into now transforming the crop into industrial products. Starting from the economic fundamentals of the country, the prices of tobacco are on the decline. Uh, the gap between our imports and exports is widening. And uh, with that in mind, it just doesn't have to take any magic to explain that you have to do a lot more exporting uh, and you have to diversify your export base. And uh, you, if we find an, an opportunity around industrial hemp, then that is the point that we have to do to unlock the regulatory and administrative con uh, constraints to industrial hemp as a commercial crop in Malawi. So that was the starting point and the dialogue continued until uh, indeed we can say that we have now friends of hemp in even in the members of parliament and some of the policy makers. We do have friends of hemp. One outcome of all the dialogue discussion was the moment when the government issued us with a letter of authorization that you can do the confined trials in Chitetze and get started as quickly as you can. So that to me was a, a very interesting pinnacle in all that dialogue. It wasn't really a surprise because a research station is supposed to do research unimpeded. So this was just another bureaucratic uh, fear of unknown because industrial hemp was lumped together with the, uh, the cousin plant, the marijuana. But we knew that they had to do this as a research, but it had to be confirmed with in writing. So that was quite uh, interesting to us. My wife, probably not much of a problem, but it is my son who is very keen and curious. He's at secondary school, so he's very curious and very investigative, researching, finding out, always pops up with questions, why did you go into industrial help? So I keep explaining to him, I can go into any other crop, be it soya, be it beans, etc. But industrial hemp gives me an opportunity to explore more of the value-added items. The diversity is much, much wider than any other crop. So that is what to me uh, looks very challenging and interesting because it isn't limited in terms of where you end. It's open-ended, so you can do many, many things. Some of the things have not been tried at all, but I think they'll be there. I'm always a risk taker in my life, so anything that looks difficult, that's what I want to get into. I'm not afraid of failing.